This video will be a review of reading graphs of functions. Here's an example where we're given the graph of a function, y equals f of x, and we're asked to figure out for what values of x is f of x equal to 0. So remember, since y is equal to f of x, we want to know when is y 0. We're going to look at this graph and try to find out the points where the y value equals 0. Now, y equals 0, that's at a height here that lines up with the x-axis. So this graph isn't labeled, but we could label it x and y. And the x-axis, the horizontal axis here, contains points whose y values are all 0. And we notice that the blue curve crosses that at two places, here and here. So based on this graph, we would estimate that f of x is 0 when x is, at this point, it looks like when x is 0. And at this point, when x is 2. And now, these might just be considered approximations uh, because we're getting them from the graph. But for a question like this, you're typically supposed to assume that if the graph looks like it goes through a point that's easy to read, probably it's meant to actually go through that point. So let's take a look at a couple more. When is f of x equal to negative 1? Well, we want to figure out where does the graph line up with y equals negative 1. Now that's this line. And we see it appears there's one point on the blue graph that touches a height of y equals negative 1. And that's when x is 1. And then when is f of x equal to 1? When is y equal to 1? Well, that's up here at these two points. And now when we look at these, it doesn't appear that it lines up with an exact value. So we're going to have to estimate. This x value, it's negative. It's less than 0. It doesn't look like we're quite at negative 0.5. We're a little bit to the right of that. So I'm going to estimate when x is about negative 0 0.4. And the second point, that looks to me like approximately 2.4. So a lot of times, that's the best you can do reading a graph. Um, for more exact answers, you typically need to have a formula for the function so that you can solve an equation. OK, let's look at a few more examples. Uh, here's another function. When is f of x equal to 0? Well, we want to know when do we cross the line y equals 0, which is the x-axis. That appears to be three points, x equal to negative 1, x equal to 0, and x equal to 1. Then when is f of x equal to 1. Again, we're going to have to estimate that. It's at a point that's a little bit to the left of negative 0.5. On this scale, that looks to me like it's about negative 0.6. And when is f of x equal to negative 1? Down here. Again, that looks like it's a little bit more than 0 0.5. On this scale, let's call that 0 0.6. So this question is a little bit different. It's asking, for what values of x is f of x positive? When is y positive? So we're not looking just for one value of y. We're looking for lots of values of y everywhere where the function gives you an output that's greater than 0. That means that's everything here. So we want all of the outputs above the x-axis. 
And it looks like we get that here. So we have x values that are to the left of this crossing. Now this crossing here, this crossing of the x-axis, appears to occur at 0. We want what's to the left of that. So f of x is positive when x is less than 0. And we also want this part of the graph, which occurs when x is greater than 2. And then when we're asked to figure out when is f of x negative, that's going to be this region here between those two points. So x should be greater than 0, and it should be less than 2. And you can express that and as just a single compound inequality like this. If I write these two inequalities, x between two values, this is the same as saying that x is less than 0 and, or x is greater than 0 and x is less than 2. The x values that have both of those conditions satisfied are the ones in this interval. Let's do one more example like this. When is this function positive? So that's going to be everywhere in this interval, which appears to be from negative 1 to 0. f of x is positive when uh, x is between negative 1 and 0, as well as this piece of the graph, which is when x is greater than 1. And then f of x is less than 0 when x is on this part of the graph. So that's to the left of negative 1. So x is less than negative 1. Or any point in this part of the graph, which is x between 0 and positive 1.